Okay, welcome to the second session. Uh, in the morning, uh, today we have already uh, covered aggregate functions, I believe. So, let me move on uh, to the next topic, but uh, I would like this to be interactive. So, if there are any questions or any doubts you have, uh, please do not hesitate to ask me. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, drop command uh, hmm? is used to drop the table. Yeah. How I can use that uh, command to drop a particular column because I have worked on a uh, MySQL or whatever. Okay. So, how do you drop a single column of a table? Um, so, you can use an alter table uh, drop column, but not all databases support it. So, on many databases, uh, your only option is to copy the data minus that column into another table, drop this table, then rename the other table back. And of course, in between you have to deal with foreign keys and so on. So, uh, yeah, that is it. Uh, sir, which uh, database means for example, this support? So, it depends on, I, uh, I cannot give you a list, but some databases allow you to do an alter table drop column. Some others do not. MySQL, since you mentioned it, I do not think it allows you to drop a column. Okay, so, let us move on to uh, nested subqueries. Uh, again, I think most of you would be familiar with this, so I will go through it quickly. If there are any uh, questions, uh, please stop me. So, in SQL, uh, subqueries can be nested in one of several different places. The part which almost everyone is familiar with is nested subqueries which are nested in the where clause. However, you can also have uh, subqueries nested in the from clause and in the select clause. And uh, you have probably seen this um, examples here. So, the first one is uh, a query which uh, finds courses offered in fall 2009 and spring 2010 using our university schema which you have been seeing since this morning. So, the relevant relation is the section relation, which says which course is offered uh, in which semester, which year and the section information. So, using this, we want things which uh, course, which is offered in fall 2009 and in spring 2010. There are many ways of writing this query. We can use intersection, we can use join, but in this particular case, we have used a subquery, which says uh, check if the course ID for a course which is in fall 2009 here is also present in the set of course IDs which run in spring 2010. So, we are using the in clause here with a subquery. So, we can use a not in clause also similarly. Uh, this one says uh, offered in 2009, but not in spring 2010, where we have flipped this to not in. Now, this particular query we could also write using in intersect. We could take the two parts and intersect. This we could also write using the except or the minus clause. In uh, Oracle, it is called minus. Yeah. In, in I, uh, I understand it was added later to the SQL, right? Uh, it was fairly early. Nested subqueries have been around from very early versions of SQL. Region of in, since it would be done with the, with, with the natural join. Uh, no, this particular uh, case of in can be done easily using natural join. And the reason this one is particularly easy is because um, this subquery is independent of the outer query. But we will see in just a minute that you can have uh, what are called correlation variables. That is, some attributes from the outer query can be used in the inner query. Now, those are harder to write using uh, intersection. It, they, you can write it. It is not impossible, but it is harder. We will see that in a minute. So, this was just a very simple example, which could be written in multiple ways. Does that answer your question? Okay. So, moving on. Um, so, take this. Find the total number of students who have taken course sections taught by this particular instructor. Now, how can we phrase this? We can have an outer query, which is the students. And we can use a nested subquery to check if that student has taken a course taught by this instructor. And so, that is what this particular one is doing. So, here is the takes relation, which uh, records which students have taken which courses in which semester uh, year and so forth. So, what we are doing here is um, select count distinct ID. So, we are not double counting a student, that is a query distinct students, who have taken a course taught by this person. So, first let us look at the subquery. 
from teachers where teachers dot id equal to 101011. So, this is all the uh, sections that have been taught by this person. And now, a section is uniquely identified by the course id, section id, semester and the year. This four attributes together form a primary key of section. So, if you uh, just to remind you of that, uh, the same course may be offered in different years or different semesters. So, uh, but even within a single semester and year, it is possible that there are two sections of the course and the section id um, uniquely identifies which section this person has taught. So, different teachers may teach different sections. So, this uniquely identifies a section and in takes again, this student has taken a particular course in a year uh, semester section. So, we check if this whole thing is present in here. This is similar to the previous query. The only difference is now instead of one attribute, you have a whole tuple of attributes and you can say in this. Again, this can also be done using intersection as we saw. Now, uh, there are uh, other operations too for comparing such. Now, if you note that all of these operations so far have had a singleton value on one side and a set on the other. In particular, in the left hand side, you had a single value and then we said in or not in. Now, there are other comparisons in addition to in or not in. In particular, uh, we can have um, greater than all, greater than some or variants of those. Uh, here is a version of this query which asks for names of instructor with salary greater than some, at least one instructor in biology written without using a sub query. So, this particular one can be written as there are two copies of instructor T and S and S department name is biology and we want to make sure that T salary is greater than S salary and we are going to select distinct T. So, a particular T will be in this output if there exists an instructor S in biology whose salary is less than this person's salary. This is a correct query, but it turns out it is also an inefficient query because you are going to compare potentially every instructor on the left with every instructor in biology. In contrast, you can write this in a cleaner manner like this. Select name from instructor where salary is greater than sum, select salary from instructor where department name equal to biology. So, what is the great, this sub query is going to give a whole set of values and greater than sum or it can also be thought of as greater than any, make sure that this is greater at least one value in there. And how can that be done efficiently? The database query optimizer can actually take the minimum value in there and compare with just the minimum value. So, it is easier for the optimizer to handle this particular case. Any questions on this? Yeah. Is it any implication of writing the condition in uh, another way? Means uh, T salary is greater than S salary. Yeah. Writing this thing second and writing S department name equals to botany writing first. Okay. Is so there any? Question uh, if I repeat it is uh, there are two conditions here. One is on T salary greater than S salary and the other is S department name equal to biology. Uh, it actually does not matter which order you write it. You could have flipped it. In SQL, the order is irrelevant. So, which you are going to select things which satisfy both. So, but in the back, back end, which condition will be uh, checked first? First condition or the second condition? That depends on the optimizer. Uh, in this case, most probably, I, it cannot guarantee it. The optimizer uh, has a cost model and it explores alternative plans and picks the one which is cheapest according to its estimates. Uh, but most probably here, what would happen is um, it would uh, select uh, biology as uh, instructors from biology, take that sub relation and then take a cross product of that with the other copy of instructor and then check for greater than. Okay. So, moving on, uh, here are uh, some more. I am going to, yeah. Uh, I think most of the current uh, set of databases support the greater sum, greater all. Now, here is a variant which says um, find instructors whose salary is greater than salary of all instructors in biology. Now, this query is almost the same except instead of greater than sum, we said greater than all. So, it has to be greater than every single one of them. Again, this particular one you could have written by taking the maximum salary and then say greater than that. Then there are uh, these two, uh, so, so far we have seen a single value and a set. Now, this one is just a single set uh, and we can check if uh, the set is empty or not. 
So, let us um, see some examples. Um, so, find courses taught in both these semesters um, can be written as follows. Now, here we have done something new. Uh, so, let us uh, go over this a little slowly. We are taking one copy of uh, section S, which is in fall 2009. And now, in the subquery, the subquery exists and here is a subquery. There are two conditions in the subquery. First of all, it is on section and the first condition is that the this copy of section is in spring 2010, but there is one more condition that s dot course id equal to t dot course id. So, note that this s is from outside, the, the s here is really from this s, while this t is from here. So, this is an example of a a correlation uh, variable. So, this s here is called a correlation variable. It is defined in the outer query, but used in the inner query. And this kind of a subquery, which uses a variable from outside is also called a correlated subquery. Now, um, what happens when you evaluate this? For each section here, you will evaluate this subquery using the current course id. Now, clearly if this particular section here in fall 2009, which in the same course also ran here, then that tuple in section would satisfy these two conditions and this one with respect to the outer one and therefore, exists would be true. There is at least one tuple and it would get output. So, those are correlated subqueries and although again in this particular case, we could have written it easily without correlation. Uh, there are cases where correlated subqueries make querying a lot easier. Now, here are some more examples of uh, subqueries. Find all students who have taken all courses offered in the biology department. So, this one is going to use a not exist query. Some of you have probably seen this kind of query. Um, in SQL, you would like to be able to use universal quantification. What is universal quantification? Something is true for all something else. Unfortunately, SQL does not support universal quantification directly. Therefore, we have to jump through a few hoops um, to using not exists. So, let us see how we do that. So, select students. This is a copy of student where not exists. Now, what is going on here in this subquery? The subquery actually has a select from where except select from where. Now, what is this one? It is selecting course ID from course where department name is biology. So, this one is getting all courses in biology and this one is removing from the except clause here is removing from this set all courses from takes where this s dot id equal to t dot id. So, we are taking all the courses in biology, removing all the courses taken by this student if there is a course left over, that means the student has not taken the course. If there is no course left, that means the student has taken all biology courses. So, the condition here is not exists anything in here will imply the student has taken all biology courses. So, this is a standard template not exists and then you take the set of all things and then remove from it the set of things which this person has taken. Now, note that we cannot write it using equal to all. Equal to all will insist that it be equal to exactly every one of those values. So, this requires a subquery like this to be written. You cannot write it without a subquery in SQL. Uh, you can, but it is a lot more complicated. Okay. So, that is an example of subquery in the where clause. Now, subqueries can also be used in the from clause. Uh, technically, in SQL, they are called derived relations. So, here is an example where we want to find uh, average instructor's salaries of all those departments, where the average salary is greater than 42,000 dollars. So, what I am going to do is first compute department name average salary using a subquery over here from instructor group by department name. So, what do I have here? I have department name and the average salary. Now, on top of this subquery, I am going to, I am going to use this in a from clause just like I would have used a relation name and then check if average salary greater than 42,000. 
Now, many of you are familiar with a different way of writing this query. How would you write it? Without using uh, subquery in the from clause. This particular one can be written. Yeah, you can use a having clause. So, in addition to group by, we can say having average salary greater than 42,000 right here without this. Um, but there are other queries where this is obviously going to be useful. Here is uh, another way of writing this same query, where what we have it is actually basically it is the same thing, except we have done two things. One is we have taken this sub query and given it a name department average, and we have done one more thing. We have renamed these attributes over here. Okay. So, that is just the renaming construct. Again, uh, this exact syntax supported by different databases varies. I think this particular one does not quite work in Oracle, for example. Let us move to another very useful construct, which is the width clause. Now, let us take a quick poll. How many of you have used the width clause? Very few. Okay. So, this is something which really helps you to write complex queries, and I would strongly urge you to try this out. All databases today support it. So, what is the width clause? It is basically a way of, you, all of you have used views I assume. So, the width clause is a way of creating a very temporary view, which exists only for the purpose of this query, does not actually get created in the database. It is a local view. Think of it if in programming language terminology, when you write a program, you do not write everything as part of the single main function. You break up your program into pieces, subroutines or functions. And then the main program uses those functions. The width clause lets you structure SQL queries in exactly the same fashion. So, these can be thought of as the equivalent of functions or views so in the case of SQL. So, what is uh, this particular uh, query doing? Find all departments with the maximum budget. So, we realize that we first need to know what is the maximum budget, then we need to find departments with the maximum budget. So, what we have done is create a view relation max budget, um, and we have given a name here for the attribute. Uh, we have called it value as select max budget from department. Now, in general, a view defined this way may have many tuples with many attributes. It is a general relation, but in this particular case, it is actually a special case. What is going to happen? Since we said max budget from department, how many tuples will be there? only one and it has only one attribute, but it is still a relation. It is a relation with a single tuple, single attribute um, and that relation has been called max budget and the attribute has been called value. Now, we want to select departments with that budget, with that maximum value. So, we have defined this with clause. So, now we can define the main query as select budget from department comma max budget. Now, you may be tempted to not write max budget here. You may be tempted to write from department, where department budget equal to max budget or value, because in this case, you know it is a single value, but that is wrong. It is not really a single value. It is a single relation, I mean it is a relation with a single tuple with a single value. Since it is a relation, we have to use it only in the from clause here, and we are doing a join with it, and the join condition is department budget equal to this max budget dot value. Clearly, only departments with the maximum budget will get selected. You could have written this query in different ways, but by breaking it up like this, it hopefully is a lot cleaner, it is a lot easier to understand. Any questions on this? Yeah. Uh, the question is, will this create a view called max budget? In effect, it is a view. However, that view is available only within this query. It is not available outside of the query. The view is not stored. You cannot access it outside of this. So, in general, you may have many uh, things here. You can say with something as another relation as. So, you can create a number of views. Each of those views here can access the previous views. And in the end, you will have a single query, which will use one or more of those views. Any questions? So, Oracle supports it, uh, PostgreSQL, DB2, SQL Server, every, everybody supports this. Again, there are small differences in the syntax. Uh, so, on the specific database, you have to look up the manual to see the syntax variation. So, here is a 
more complex query, find all departments where the total salary is greater than the average of the total salary at all departments. Now, what is this query? First of all, understanding this query itself is hard. Um, so, what we want is um, the total salary for each department. Now, the average across all this and we want departments whose total salary is greater than the average of the total salaries. So, here is how we can do it. The first uh, width uh, view here says department total as select department name sum salary from instructor group by department name. So, for each department we are getting the total of the salary, sum of the salaries. Now, this one department total average is selecting average value. Now, this thing is called value here. So, average value from department total. So, this is the average of the total salaries. Now, the main query uses the department total and the department total average here, where department total dot value greater than department total average dot value and select those department names. Okay. So, again if you did not have a with clause, you could have written this query, you could have used sub queries, but there are two issues. One it is harder to read. The second is some of these would get repeated. So, if you notice this department total is used here and it is used again here. This is one of the major reasons for using functions. You can use the function multiple times. That is what we have done here. We have used the same view multiple times in this query. Any questions? And finally, the last form of uh, subqueries. Um, this one allows you to use the subquery in a select clause, in fact, in other places also, but the key thing to note is that this subquery here is used in a place where we expect a single value. Now, what is this subquery doing? Um, select department name from department and then this subquery. Select count star from instructor where department dot department name, that is this department, is equal to instructor dot department name, this instructor's department name. Um, as num instructor. So, this whole subquery is result we are calling num instructor, but there is a difference between this subquery and the previous ones. In this position in an SQL query, we expect a single value, we do not expect a set, we do not expect a relation with multiple attributes, but if you see this syntactically as I told you before, syntactically this subquery is actually a relation with a single tuple with a single attribute. So, it seems that the type is mismatched, but actually what SQL does is it converts the type automatically here. Because it expects a single value, it will first check that this result has a single tuple and of course, we know it has a single attribute because we just did count star. So, it takes the tuple and extracts the value from it and uses the value in place of the query result. So, what we have done is um, um, for each department we have counted how many instructors there are in that department. Now, we could have done this in a much simpler way. Yes, what is a simpler way? We could have said select um, uh, you know department name comma count star from instructor group by department name. Okay. Select count star from instructor group by department name, uh, select department name comma count star. Is that actually equivalent to this query? No. So, this will count all the departments in the various group by individual group. Yeah. Department. yeah. So, let me just put in that query here to contrast it. This particular query is going to miss out any department which does not have any instructor. So, supposing you created a new department, it does not have an instructor yet. Uh, then that department will not occur here at all. Whereas, here as long as it is in the department relation, it will appear here and what will happen to the subquery? It is yeah, the subquery result will be empty and count star for an empty uh, result will be 0. So, that way we do not miss this particular case. Yeah. Left, uh, left joint. It can be done using left outer joint. So, what this query is going to do, um, the natural left outer join, 
if a department has an instructor, it will be paired with those instructors that join. If a department does not have an instructor, it will still appear here, but with the uh, fields from instructor set to null. Now, this id field is coming from instructor. So, when I do count id, count will actually eliminate null values, count star will not, but count will eliminate null values. Therefore, if a department has no instructor, the id will be just that single value null and then the count will be 0. So, this is another way of writing this query, but this one will give you a different result. Any questions? Okay. So, we uh, will make a small detour into database updates and then we will come back to querying again in the subsequent chapters. So, uh, again I hope most of you are familiar with this, I will go over it quickly. Um, so, we can delete from instructor, we will delete all tuples because there is no condition. So, better be careful with this, if you forget the where clause you are in trouble. Um, some databases may warn you. Yeah, or some databases will actually keep a backup of the relation, so you can restore it. Hmm? Yeah, you can roll. You, no, actually the transaction is committed, but Oracle will actually keep a backup copy, which there is a way to access it, even though it's all gone. Um, but they have found many people doing this and getting into trouble, so they have a solution for that. Uh, but not all databases will be so nice. Um, this one is delete all instructors where department name is finance. So, in general uh, there is a predicate here and all uh, tuples in instructor which satisfy this predicate are going to be deleted. And this predicate can also have a subquery. So, what is this fellow doing? Delete from instructor where department name is in select department name from department where building equal to Watson. What is this doing? It is deleting instructors whose department is in the Watson building. Now, I cannot apply this predicate without a subquery because um, here I only have instructor, I have department name, I do not have the building in which that department is. So, if I want to access that, I am forced to use a subquery here. So, it is essential here, there is no way around using a subquery. Any questions? Uh, you can have more complex queries, delete all instructors whose salary is less than the average salary of all instructors. So, here I have a subquery, select average salary from instructor. What kind of a subquery is this here? I am using less, I am not using less than some, less than any, I am using less, which means this is a scalar subquery. It is going to be treated as a single value and we know that it, it will be a single tuple. Therefore, we can extract a single value from this, which is the average and I am going to delete from instructor where salary is less than the average. So, all sub average salary people are removed. Yeah. Then the where clause of the select or from, then it is called a scale. Uh, if you use it in a position where a single value is expected, okay, then it is a scalar subquery. Now, how do you know it returns only a single tuple? We know it returns a single attribute, syntactically we can see that. If there is an aggregate function, we can easily see that it will return only one, but you are allowed to use scalar subqueries without aggregates. What happens is at runtime, if it returns more than one value, uh, then there is an exception and the query fails. If it returns no values, then it is taken as the null value Yeah, and the normal case it should return a single tuple whose value is taken. Now, this does something funny. Supposing we execute this by um, taking one instructor after another, take the first instructor, compute the average, see if it is less, delete that, take the next instructor, again compute the average. Now, there is a problem. As we throw out instructors, the average will keep changing. So, if SQL actually behaves this way, there is a problem. Depending on the order in which it chooses instructors, the final result is going to be different it is not deterministic, that, that would be a big mistake. So, SQL is not defined like that. So, what is done is, whenever you have a condition here in a delete or uh, insert update clause, these conditions are checked first for all tuples. In uh, which table? Instructor table? 
um, then nothing will happen. The no tuple, so it, it this query will not even run. I mean, this there is no tuple to be deleted. It won't run. If there is at least one tuple for each tuple, it will execute this condition. Check if the condition is satisfied, but it won't do the update or delete insert yet. It will first check the condition for all tuples. You will find which all tuples have to be deleted in this case and then in the end it will go and delete all those tuples. Therefore, the order in which it considers it will not matter. Now, actually optimizers are more clever um, where possible they will kind of delete on the fly, but the semantics is that it should be like I described. The actual implementation can be optimized as long as it generates the same final result. Okay. Insertion, we have all uh, no doubt seen the basic form of insertion, just give the values for each attribute or you can specifically list the attribute names and give values for those. If you omit any, what will the value be? It will be either the default value if you have specified a default or it will be null or if the attribute cannot take the null value, there will be an exception or we can have a sub query here. Instead of giving a single value, I can have a sub query and the results of that sub query are inserted here. So, in this particular case, I had all instructors to the student relation with total credit set to 0 in the same department. So, they are added back here. Um, again, this query is fully evaluated before it is inserted. Otherwise, if you do this, insert into table 1, select star from table 1. Once you have inserted, you have a new tuple. So, if you take that into consideration, it will get inserted again and again, assuming there is no primary key declaration. If there is a primary key, it will get violated and the query will fail anyway. And then you have update. Uh, so, this one says give a 3 percent update to those who are above 100,000 and everybody else receives 5 percent please. So, we can do the following. Um, update instructor set salary is equal to this times 1.3 where salary greater than 100,000 and then the next one says where salary less than or equal to 100,000, but this is risky. If by mistake you put this first, everyone who is less than 100,000 will get updated. So, if somebody was uh, 95,000 and something, they will go above 100,000 and get 3 more percent. So, they will get a double increment which is wrong. So, this is dangerous. Uh, a better way is to use the case statement, update instructor set salary equal to case when salary is less than 100,000, then add 5 percent, uh, then set it to salary times 5 percent, otherwise salary star 1.03. So, this is an case expression which returns a value depending on which condition is satisfied, it returns this value or this value and that value is assigned into the salary attribute. Uh, and then there are cases where you need to use a scalar subquery uh, in the update statement. So, this uh, in the previous slide, this was just a case statement. Here we have a whole subquery. So, I am updating student setting total credits equal to some subquery here. Now, note that this subquery is actually using s dot id here. So, it is a subquery which is running for this particular student and what it is doing is um, it is taking a sum of credits and uh, uh, sets this over here. Now, note that in this particular case, um, if the student had not taken any course, this will be empty. So, this sum of credits would be null. So, that is what this is. If you wanted 0 instead, well, there are several ways of doing it. Uh, one way is um, instead of just sum credits here, we will say case when sum credits is not null, then sum credits else 0. Okay, so, that wraps up the first chapter.